Uh, good morning and welcome to the Dispensational Bible Church uh, where we study the whole Bible the Bible's own way. And that's a unique little motto saying that we have at the uh, Dispensational Bible Church because, you know, all the Bible's for us, as in the timeline, but not all of it's to you. And in order to get profit out of the Word of God, you have to study the Word of God rightly divided. And we as mid-Acts dispensationalists, uh, King James Bible believers, we understand how to get profit out of the Word of God. And uh, we're very thankful for that. We're thankful that we have the Word of God in our possessions in the King James Bible for the English-speaking people. Um, I'm ecstatic about it. Uh, many of you know that uh, sometimes I can't pronounce uh the words in English correctly, but uh, you love me just the same, and I know that very much. But anyway, we are meeting in the Cambridge, Ohio area, and uh, uh, and then that's in the southeastern part of Ohio. We went from the northeast to the southeast, and uh, we're uh, really thankful for the place that we're meeting here. Uh, you're, you're welcome to come and join us, and I know you're uh, joining us on Facebook Live, and this will also be on the YouTube channel that we have uh, later on as far as videos that you can watch later. And we encourage you to do that because we're, as we study the book of Daniel, uh, we're looking at some things that, that Daniel was going through and what he's looking for over here in the future area and uh, it, to help the Jewish remnant over here and the believers over here, but there's also some things in there in the times of the Gentiles, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, I just want to share some prayer requests, praise items. I talked with uh, Barb uh, Wagner this week. Uh, she is uh, uh, talking about Walt a little bit, and Walt's uh, health is not that great, and then we talked to uh, Betty Watson uh, also. Uh, keep her in thought and prayer as uh, we know that uh, as we get older our body starts breaking down and it's not a pleasant thing to see especially for a child to see their mom or dad or loved ones just just you know just kind of fade and uh, but you know that's a part of life uh, you know you grow flowers and they look great and then all of a sudden they die but they also leave seeds don't they they leave seeds, and uh, the ones that we're talking about and the ones that's gone on before us has planted seeds in us in a way that we can understand who they were in Christ Jesus, one, and then we can just remember that and, 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 and grow off of that also. But uh, uh, also keep in mind that uh, it was... Uh, uh, anyway, keep in mind our uh, work here. Uh, our internet ministries are, are and all, and uh, if you want to support it, you can go to our website at www.dispensationalbiblechurch.org, and you can support us that way, or just give us a call or email, just an encouragement on some things. And uh, uh, oh, uh, Barb dies; she's hurting in her back, and that's why they're not here today. So just keep her in thought and prayer too. Uh, if you got any questions about what we're studying or just inter, uh, Bible questions altogether, we encourage you to uh, uh, send them in so we can continue to be who we are uh, and as we grow together. Um, also, let's see um, if there's anything else. I'll keep just some things about prayer requests. We know as, as we step outside of our home, it seems like the world's just crashing down. The world's been crashing down since Adam and Eve. Uh, but as with this technology that we have with the click of a phone or, or a video camera or something, it's right into you, your lens on your TV and your phone instantly, instantly. And I think that's what makes it uh, magnified more. Uh, but you as a Christian, you keep your ears to the ground and you're, you take the blinders off and you, you know who you are in Christ Jesus uh, and mindful and that's where we need to be. We need to understand what times are we in. What do we need to do as, as Bible-believing Christians? So uh, anyway, uh, we hope that you will enjoy this study today. Let's go into word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the things you've given us. And as we think about um, who we are in Christ, we are grateful for that because we deserve a lot worse. 
And Lord, as we think about the prayer requests and praise items, let us be mindful of who they are in Christ and let us rejoice in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you, if you will, uh, be turning to Daniel chapter 11. Uh, we left off uh, verse 17. We're going to start in Daniel chapter 11, verse 17. And uh, we can continue to do uh, that. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, let's cancel that for a second. Hit the wrong button there. Uh, anyway, um, Daniel chapter 11, sorry. Technology, talking about technology, it pops up. But anyway, uh, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 17. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Thus say shall he do, excuse me, thus shall he do. And he will give him the daughter of a woman, corrupting her, but she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him. After this he turned his face unto the isles, and shall take many. Now the king of the north, I was looking at the invasions and stuff like that, the king of the south defeats the king of the north. And the king of the north comes back and finally defeats the king of Egypt and takes over from him and wins complete victory for him. Now then in verse 18, he begins to turn his face towards the isles uh, 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 and shall take many like the isles of the Gentiles and up in that area. But after he takes the, over Palestine, he beats up the king of Egypt. And he looks towards the Mediterranean and he says, let's go and get, you know, we're going to take that type of thing. Now verse 18b says, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. He will stop him. Without his reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Now, he will go out and, he, and, he, and, he, and not lose. Now, verse 19. That's where we picked up lesson 66. Then he shall turn his face towards the, the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. So he goes back home and the battle is over. Then shall, shall stand up in his estate a riser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. Now this guy who comes up in verse 20 is the fourth king of the north. And you have, we have passed in the chapter. Now, at this point, there's been three or four of them, okay? But there's one in verse 6. There's another one in verse 7. There's one in verse eight, 11. And then there's a uh, fourth one in verse, uh, uh, verse 20. But notice, th notice this one where we're getting re ready to look at. Because the next one, verse 21, says, And he is his, and in his estate shall stand up a vile person. Now, verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peacefully and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Now, who do you think that vile person the Bible's talking about? Now, we know Daniel's way over here, right? And he's been in captivity for 70 years. And he's looking for this wrath, this time period over here. Who, is, who would that vile person be? Well, I think you know who he is. The Antichrist. So the Antichrist is the fifth king of the north. And when, when we get to Revelations that we're going to look at in a little bit, that will be important. But what does the number five mean in your Bible? Just, just for curiosity. The number five, the fifth chapter in Genesis. What, what's going on there? We always call that the death chapter because everybody dies, it seems like. But five is also divisions. So, you know, that's why if you think about number five and he's the fifth king, is he going to really bring peace and, and prosperity to this nation, Israel, over here? 
or the world? Well, we know it's not to be right. But beginning at this point, you will see the career, from this point on, of the Antichrist, which is divided into two sections. Be turning with me to 2 Thessalonians. Hold your finger there. And Daniel, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, who wrote the book of Thessalonians? Well, we know the Apostle Paul did. But Apostle Paul was not around when Daniel was there. Apostle Paul writes 13 books for the uh, dispensation of grace for the uh, body of Christ. But we also know that the, either Thessalonians or Galatians was the first book that Paul wrote. Thessalonians talking about the catching away. And people was telling them, oh, it already happened. Well, it didn't already happen, and Paul was talking to them there. Galatians' issue was uh, that they were saved by grace through faith, plus nothing else, but, but the Judaizers wanted to put them back under law, much like what religion does today. But uh, in the book of Thessalonians, second chapter, uh, or second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, I'm going to read this to you, uh, starting in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto Him. That gathering together is a day of redemption. That ye should not be soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from, from, as from us that as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that that the day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now these be people in Thessalonians was telling this church, the body of Christ there, that the catching away already happened, you're still here. And Paul said, no, no, no. That's not what I told you. Okay? And, and he says, what does he say? The man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay? That's the two sections, that's the two people that that Antichrist represents there. The man of sin and the son of perdition. Now, that is the Antichrist. Notice in verse 3, he is called the man of sin, the son of perdition. And those two titles describe those two halves of the career of the Antichrist. Now, the first half, the first half of the week over here in the uh, 70th week of Daniel... Uh, the, uh, uh, is the man of sin. That vile person that Daniel talks about in 1121 that we just read. And in the second half of the week, he's known as the son of perdition. Now the first half of the week, he's the man of sin. He's a human, a, a person like us. He is a vile person we will study about. So he is satanic-oriented human. So he's he, he's his idolizing Satan, okay? We talked about this at uh, supper a little bit, about the end of idolatry is apostasy. Apostasy is departing, okay? When you start idolizing something, you, if you don't watch your mind and, and watch what you idolize, you'll end up in apostasy, okay? No ifs, ands, or buts. It always happens. But uh, he is the vile person. And he's following Satan's uh, program and design and plan. That's what he's doing. He's following that. You know, we look at the world today in the times of the Gentiles. It sure seems like the people are following satanic rituals and satanic ways and taking their rights away and all that stuff. But look, then in the middle of the week, uh, he is killed, the Antichrist, okay, the uh, man of sin. He is killed... Uh, the assassinated with a sword. Now, I'm going to read Zechariah, if you're taking notes, Zechariah chapter 11, verse 15 and 17. I'm going to read this to you, unless you want to turn there right quick. Well, you can turn there while I'm talking. But uh, Zechariah 11, um, verses 15, don't lose your place where we're at right here, um, says, And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd, for lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broken, nor feed that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of fat and tear the claws in pieces. Woe 
to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and his right eye, and his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye, right eye will be utterly darkened. This is how they wound the Antichrist over there. He will, he'll be cut off and wounded in the eye. And, and, and when the sword wounds him, he is assassinated. Okay? And, and, that's, and then he's resurrected, but he isn't resurrected like others were in the Bible. When, when a lost man dies, guys, his soul goes to hell. And the spirit, uh, and he never gets out of hell. Okay, you can't get out of hell. You cannot pray people out of purgatory. You cannot pray people out of hell. The only unpartable sin today, if, if you die unsaved, okay, that's the only thing unpartable. Right now, if you're alive, you can be, un, you can be pardoned for the sin debt that you have against God, that, that you're an alien, you're, you're, you're enemies, you're ungodly, and God's got a pardon plan for you that he died and was buried and rose again. That's all you got to do is trust that and that alone. Now, uh, the guy goes to hell, his soul goes to hell, but the spirit goes back to God who gave it. And there he lays in his corpse. When he's in the midweek there, he's laying there dead in, in the state, or what do they call him, laid out of the state. He's, he's there. And, and by the same time, that's when Satan is cast out of heaven. And, and, and about the same time, the beast, who is, he is now called, from then on, enters in him. So he's no longer the man of sin. He becomes the son of perdition, the beast. The son of perdition, that second term, is also used in Judas Iscariot. Okay? Way back in John chapter 17 is the only person ever called that. And Judas dies. And we're going to look at some verses here in a minute. And he dies, okay? And the Bible says he went to his own place. That's somewhere special for Judas, okay? He didn't go to heaven. He didn't go to hell, all right? He went to his own place, somewhere like out in the deep, the bottomless pit, Let's look at this for a moment, if you will. The Antichrist must be a Jew and a reprobate. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 37, uh, we'll read that in a little bit. It says, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of a woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now, I take that not desire of a woman to be like he desires a man. You know, he don't want no part of a woman, so what does that tell you what's going on? I think, listen, I think about the United States of America, how it's turned from, from a lot of things uh, that, the, you know, it, 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 uh, uh, marriage between a man and a woman, period. That's what marriage called. They want to say it's a union, okay? Then you take a family. Family is something that brings stability to a man and woman to a family, and now they got the family destroyed. Okay, now human governments that you know they're destroying human government. Next is going to be your free will. But what I'm getting at is they desynthesize our brain, the United States of America. And I'll say this with love, guys. No wonder these other nations hates the United States so bad the way we idolatrize and the way we portray ourselves to be. Okay, there's countries out there that hates our guts the way we promote things, and they're ungodly things. Okay, I just want to say that with love. But anyway, Jesus Christ said He chose twelve apostles, apostles, and one of them was the devil. In John chapter six, verse seventy, John Jesus said that Judas was the son of perdition. And a son of perdition is the 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 loss of the soul or the hope of salvation, damnation, the place of condition or damnation of hell. That's what that means, perdition. You're, you're out there. You're, you're, you're damned. In John chapter 17, verse uh, uh, 12, he says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. 
Those that thou givest me I have kept, and none of them was lost but the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So he knew who Judas was. Jesus Christ did. The son of perdition. Now, Paul says the man of sin that was the son of perdition. That's what we're looking at in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Now, there's only one man in the Bible who did not go to heaven or hell, but went to his own place. And that's Judas Iscariot right here. It's a, Acts chapter 1, verse 12, uh, 25 says that he may t- take part of this ministry and apostleship from where it's Judas by transgression fail, that he might go to his own place. So the Antichrist will come out of that bottomless pit. He will not be born, but he will be resurrected. And he must do what Jesus did in order for the people to believe that he is a Christ. So when the Antichrist gets wounded, this man of sin gets wounded, he's laying there, and the beast comes out of the bottom of his pit and, inside, and, and it goes inside of him. Be turning to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. And we may go back to Thessalonians just for a second. Um, keep your Thessalonians, but Revelation chapter 11. And you'll see something here. So if that Antichrist is going to be God, and we're going to look, that's what we're going to look at the Thessalonians here in a minute. He's got to be resurrected somewhat like Jesus Christ was resurrected. That way the people will believe he's Jesus. He's Jesus. If I told you this once, I'll tell you a thousand times that when Jesus, the, the, the pictures that you have in your Bible and on your walls, some of you, about Jesus Christ with long hair, white skin, blue eyes, with a pointed beard, is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. And people's going to see him, that picture, and think it's the real Jesus Christ, or he's the false Jesus Christ, standing there, and they're going to say, well, we've got pictures of him. That's who he looks like. But the real Jesus Christ, when he comes back, is not going to look like that. He's going to look like a man of war. He's coming back with fire and vengeance. And the, and the people that's following the Antichrist is going to say, there's the devil. You're right. There's the devil. So they're not going to believe the real Jesus Christ, Okay. Revelation chapter 11, Revelation chapter 11, verse 7, talking about the two witnesses. We mentioned, I think, last lesson. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now the beast, the Antichrist, is described at this point in his career in the middle of the week, right here. Midweek, mid trip, as one who ascends from the bottomless pit. Revelations chapter 7, verse 8. The Revelation 17, verse 8. 17, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. perdition. The beast was, somewhere in the past, was. That fellow was on the earth. Okay? That son of perdition was on this earth. And John says he is not on the earth now, when I'm writing, but he shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. That may sound confusing, but think about it. He was... And is not, and shall sin, sin. The man of sin is assassinated, and, and, and there lays his body. And that point comes when the angel comes and opens up the bottomless pit in Revelation uh, verse 9. And that spirit that is king over the bottomless pit, that son of perdition he is called, ascends out of that bottomless pit and enters into the body of that dead man that corpse, and gives life to that corpse. He's resuscitated, if you will. And that corpse is animated by that demonic spirit. And the man comes up and counterfeits the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was dead for three days. He's gone. This guy is dead for three days. He's up. He comes up in the counterfeit resurrection. He comes up saying, Peace. 
dearly beloved. Now, they killed him, right? And now he's saying, peace, peace. And he, and he shall, and it says he shall come in peacefully and attain the kingdom by flatteries. People's going to fall for this guy over here. And, and he comes up and the world's hail him, hails him as God Almighty. Okay? And that who he's, that's who he claims to be. Now you're still in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We left off with that let no man deceive you by any means for this day shall not come except there, uh, there, except there come a falling way first and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposes the, and exalted himself above all that is called God and that is worship, so that he is as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now look, verse 4, Who, the man of sin, opposed and exalted himself, the son of perdition, okay, and, 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 and that sitteth in, in the temple of God, showing himself, the son of perdition, that he is God. Uh, Paul writes to Thessalonians, says, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. He's telling them what's going to happen over here, but you're not going to be a part of it, body of Christ. And he says, And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time. That he, many of us believe that that is taken to be the body of Christ, as known as one new man. For the... for Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who knoweth letteth will let, and he will be taken out of the way. And then shall that, that wicked, that's Revelation 13, verses 1 through 8, wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When Jesus Christ comes back, that's what I was trying to tell you. When he comes back, he's not coming back riding a little donkey. Okay? He's not coming back meek and mild. He's coming back with fire and vengeance. He's coming back as a man of war. He's going to have, he's going to have a pitchfork in his hand. He's going to come down. And he's going to with brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all the power and signs and lying wonders. What's going to happen over here? Satan's going to signs and lying wonders. You know, people's called up today in the dispensation of grace with signs and lying wonders. And God's not doing that today, guys. If you go out there and you think He is, you're believing in the wrong God of the Bible. Now, Satan is a God, we know that, and, and people worship that. And in verse 10, And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Listen, over here, there's those witnesses that we're talking about are out there preaching against that Antichrist, and they and people will hear that and be saved. But he says, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they shall not they 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 should believe a lie, and and that they also excuse me that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Listen, these people where it's falling in Antichrist that's trusting in an unrighteousness, they're going to have pleasure in it and they're not going to believe the truth. Is that possible today? Is that really possible today that people will believe unrighteousness and ungodliness and all that stuff and not believe the truth? <laughs> you know that to be true. Okay, Romans chapter 1 tells us exactly how we are. Okay, and God gave us up, God gave us up, God gave us over. He gave us over right to what we wanted. And today's world, if you don't watch it, you're going to get, give yourself up to what you want and it's not going to be the righteousness. I'll leave you with this, uh, not leave you, but this next verse says this. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and believed of the truth. 
you're, when you believe God, okay, and you believe that He saves you from those, those first 12 verses, okay, so that's what he's telling the Thessalonians. He wrote that second book of Thessalonians. He said, hey, I told you these things, but you believe the gospel. God chose you, would put you in the body after you believe, and you're saved from that stuff. So what are you worrying about it? I see people all the time going to be going back to Daniel chapter 11. I'm watching Facebook, and I, you know, I really enjoy Facebook. You know, some of you may too, and some of you may get upset with what I post and that stuff, but um, I... It's my Facebook. But anyway, uh, Book of Faces. But uh, think about this for a minute. There's people out there are seeing what's going on and they're putting themselves in this time over here. Well, we're not in that time over here. We're in this time right here. We're in this gap. We're in this dispensation of grace that Daniel didn't see. Daniel's, what we're talking about Daniel, Daniel's looking for it time over there this is we're still in the times of the gentiles people it should not puzzle you to think what's going on in this world right now is 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 uh uh surprising listen i learned a long time ago nothing surprises me okay not uh, when it comes to standing for truth whether standing for righteousness whether standing for ungodliness whatever you want to stand for nothing surprises me so it's your heart that makes the difference. Okay, that's who changes you. And yeah, I can get in the flesh. You ask my wife sometime, I can get in the flesh and, and all. But the thing is, I know who I am and she knows who I am and I know who she is. And, and we can look at some things and we can say, okay, we identify it and go get on with it. We don't dwell in it. She brought something up the other day uh, about grudging, holding grudges, how it just wears you down and I'm like yeah you can let it but you know if you don't worry about it and you get on with who you are in Christ you don't think about those grudges but when you think about those grudges it's most miserable man you could probably bring stuff back 30 40 years ago when you was a kid and holding grudges against people and that's not healthy back to Daniel chapter 11 the vile person the vile person you want to remember the Antichrist career is basically in two parts right here. Two parts. The man of sin and the son of perdition. The man of sin is, is the first part of the week. The son of perdition is the last part of the week. The man of sin, he's a plain ordinary man with a body and soul just like you and I got, who's under the control and direction and a plan and organization and program of Satan. That's what happens to a lot of people today. See? See? Listen, in the, in, the, in the garden, when, when Adam and Eve took part of the law tree, they died, okay? And, and when they, when now what happens there, you had God's word and you had Satan's word and he introduced the human viewpoint. And if you think about your human viewpoint, your own human viewpoint against the word of God, you're going to attack the word of God, okay? It's very simple. And, and so you can be influenced either by godly influence or ungodly influence. That's why I believe Paul talks about you yield your instruments to unrighteousness or righteousness. It's your choice. But you've got to choose which one you're going to do. God don't, God don't control you like a puppet. Satan don't control you like a puppet. But if he can influence your brain and God can inf it's it's how you handle it. So that human viewpoint, you, you got, you got here, it's just as powerful as the other two. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I believe that. Because you can deny God's word, you can divide, uh, deny Satan's word, and that leaves your word. Okay? And, that, and your word can have opinions, it can write books, it can write you know, philosophy stuff, it can profess things. But it may not line up with the Word of God, and that's what we need to do. We need to uh, line up the Word of God, and that's why we rightly divide the Word of God. I can't say that enough. And then he's assassinated. And then he's resurrected as uh, Satan's incarnated. And just like this, uh, Jesus Christ is uh, God incarnated, this guy is demonic masquerading as a human. And he gets his power and his ability to do that from Satan. Now, Satan can't create life. 
but he sure does put life in this guy. Okay, that spirit, that spirit type of thing. So, uh, let's continue. That vile person, uh, Daniel chapter eleven, verse twenty-one, <coughs> is the man of sin. Is in the first half of the week. That's where we just said that. Now, from verses twenty-one to twenty-eight, is where you're at, and beginning with verse thirty through the end of the chapter, you come to the middle of the week. And verse 31 is the middle of the week. And in the middle of the week, you'll have a transformation, a transformation take place. Verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peacefully and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of the flood shall they overthrow, overflow from before him, and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall, be, work, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up, and shall become strong with, with a small people. He will, shall enter peacefully, even upon the fattest places of the providence. And, and shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil, the riches. Yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. Now that man of sin, what he does, he comes in and takes over Israel. He obtains the kingdom by flatteries. Now, think about it. Has that happened yet? No. So it can't, we can't be in the times over here in the wrath, okay? We can't, we can't be over there. There's a lot of things we already talked about that has to take place before the Antichrist shows up. Now the kingdom is obtaining, obtaining is not Syria and is not his own. Look at verse 28a. Then, after verses 21 and 27, then shall he return into his own his land, excuse me, his land with great riches. What he's doing from 27 to 21, 27, he's going down to Israel and doing all that stuff. Then he goes back home. So the kingdom he is obtaining in verse 21 is Israel. And he's taking over Israel. And the way he does it is verse 22, 23. The prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, what is that? He, he shall make a covenant with them for one week. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. We already talked about it. He makes a covenant with Israel, the league, and he deceives them. Hmm. Imagine that, being deceived. Imagine that, peace, peace, and being deceived. Imagine that, being deceived in your own government. Nah, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> yeah, you would. Notice how he does it. He shall come in peacefully and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. He, he comes in peacefully. He's a peacemaker politically. Okay? That's what we looked in Daniel chapter 8 verse 25a says, and, the, and through his Antichrist policies, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify in his, himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. This guy has a peace policy. He comes in with a peace policy and takes the kingdom peaceful with flatteries. And that, that is what it's meant in verse 20, uh, 24 when he said, he shall, he shall do that which his fathers have done, nor, not what it done, nor his father's fathers. His fathers destroyed and consumed the land. And we read that about uh, back in verse 16. Then comes in and took the land by uh, uh, Palestine by force. But this guy comes up with the fattest part of the land, verse 24, comes up to place and scatters and divides the prey and the spoils and the riches among the people. That's basically communism. Think about it. Taking the wealth and divide it among the people. You see, that's trying to happen today, don't you? That type of thing. 
but he comes in, comes up with a peace policy and, and he takes over. And, and there had never been a king of Syria who had done this before. They all went down and fought it and took, and took over it by arms of aggression. But this guy comes in with good words, fair speeches, peace policy, his kingdom, something that his, his daddy's never done. Okay? What does he do? Let's look at this right quick. What does he do? So, Israel at the time needed three things. They need money. They need protection, and they want a temple. Got those three things right there. Money, temple, and protection. So this guy provides all three things for them, and he wins their allegiance and makes a covenant with them. This is kind of scary because you see certain parts of our government is wanting to give protection, wanting to give uh, money, wanting to give temples, if you will, forts, to a certain sect of people that's actually destroying what we are standing for. One, they need money. He provides for them. He scatters among them the prey, the spoils, and the riches. They need protection. Verse 25, and he, he shall stir up his power, he incur, he, his courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with the very great and mighty army, army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. And the king of the south threatens Israel again, and he comes there and protects them. Then he gives them a temple. Remember we studied that back in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 8 and how that 220 days after he signs a covenant with the Antichrist, Israel, he's going to have their temple rebuilt and they're going to offer sacrifices once again. And Jesus said, when you see the abomination spoken of the prophet Daniel uh, standing in the holy place, the temple is going to be rebuilt. Now, so he provides for them what they wanted and what they need. And they make a league with him, and they have a leader that make a covenant with them, verse 22. And they make a league with him, verse 23. Notice that the league made with him shall work deceitfully. You know what flattery is? You know what, well... uh, Richard mentions in the school, you know what soft soap is? It's 98% lie. (laughs) L-Y-E or L-I-E. So flattery is a lot of lying. Okay? And if you think about what's going on in our government, they're flattering many of us, trying to keep us down, uh, or trying to promote another group with flattery, and this guy comes in with flattery and deceives them. It's upsetting that, that as a Christian, uh, knowing what's going on and knowing some liberty that we have in Christ, and I know, listen guys, I know that we are not supposed to be of this world. You know, our hope is out out in the heavenly places and that's where we're going to spend eternity and if anything in this world that the, we need today is that people need to hear a clear gospel to be saved okay listen if you're unsaved and we talk about law and grace making a distinction okay if you're unsaved you need to know that the law says that you're guilty you need to know that there's a, a, a penalty for dying unsaved. You need to know that your uh, wages of sin is death. And everybody's going to die. Okay? Everybody. But you don't want to die that second death. You die that second death, you're cast in a lake of fire where you're going to be forever. You're not going to sleep like a, 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 do- a dead dog. Okay? You're going to be burning forever. 
and what this world needs to hear and what that lost person out there, if you're listening, you may have somebody that's lost and dying and going to hell and they don't care. You know, and you went to them and you said, hey, they're, they're, you know, here's what, I'll, here's what God says. And that law says you're guilty. Then, then they, may want, they may understand and they don't want to die and go to hell. So then you tell them about Jesus Christ, what he did at Calvary, that he died and was buried and rose again. He paid that penalty death for us. And that's what saves you today. That's not flattery, my friends. That's unadulterated words of God. That's what God says. That's why I really enjoy the simplicity that is found in Christ Jesus. Okay? Uh, you need to hear this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Some of you may be struggling with loved ones that, 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 that it's just sad. And we've talked about this in the past, talked about the people that's died and gone beyond, before us, and we're not sure if they even heard the gospel of Christ that saves. Okay? But we can't really worry about them. Okay? You got to worry about yourself and the people that you love right now and the people that you're come in contact with on a daily uh, basis and just, you know, just ask them. There's every opportunity in the world to just ask them a couple of things. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? And if they say, you know, I never thought about it, then you can tell them say, you know, we're talking you, you know, you heard you heard of hell. A lot of people says for you to go there. So if they believe that there's a hell and they tell you to go there, then they can believe that there's a heaven, okay? And they can go there. But in order to go to heaven, you've got to believe that Christ died for your sins and buried and rose again. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand. The gospel, he preached it, you received it, and you stand in it. That's the gospel, the gospel of Christ died for your sins and buried and rose in the gospel of Christ that saves the good news. And he preached it. How can he hear without preaching? Faith come up by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's not road signs. Okay? It's not uh, signs and wonders and miracles. It's preaching. It's words. Then you received it. How did you receive it? With all readiness right here in your heart. You didn't keep it up here in your mind. All that head knowledge. It got down in your soul, the conscience, the real you, okay? And you believed it right here where you believe, guys, okay? We, uh, you know, th that where the heart issue is. And, 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 and people say, well, you, you're judging somebody if they No, I'm not judging. I can judge your, your actions, but I can't judge your soul. That's God Almighty's doing. Then, then you stand in it. I'm not going to be removed with every winds of doctrine. And he says, but which I also but which also ye are saved if you keep in memory what I preached in you, unless you believe in vain. There's vain belief out there. Okay? And 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 you have to remember how you're saved. You ask people, well, you know, I read my Bible, I go to church, I'm a really good person. That's not what saves you. If you're trusting in those things, you're going to split hell wide open. So what you believe and trust in that Christ, and keep in memory that he died for you and buried and rose again. Verse 3, For I declared in you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to what? The Scriptures. And, which, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The death, burial, and resurrection is what saves us today. And, and that's what you need to hear. I posted a little thing on our Facebook page. What was the first words after Christ, what Christ said after he was baptized? And very few people answered it. Okay, But the very first words that came out of Christ's mouth after he was baptized in Matthew chapter 4, he goes to the wilderness Satan is there. After 40 days, he's hungry. Satan's offering him some things. The first words that came out of Christ, Jesus Christ's mouth is, It is written. <laughs> wow. 
He's using the Word of God, people. You know, so that's what we need to hear, and that's what we need to say when you when you when you bring this up with people that's really dying, going to hell. They need to hear the written words of God. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there till uh, next week. We'll start in. Uh, we'll finish out some things about the Antichrist and what the Psalm says, and and we'll get back in Daniel a little bit. But we're just remember in this dark age that we live in, it seems dark out there. There is hope, and the hope is in Jesus Christ. And we can let all this other stuff go by the wayside. You can turn all the media off. You can turn off all kinds of things, and you get your nose into the book and study who you are in Christ in the dispensation of grace. And this mystery program will bring wealth of answers to questions that you may have what's going on in the prophetic program. Lord, let's thank you for the day. We thank you for the things you've given us. And as we think about um, our messages that we can have in this world, uh, what a glorious message that we have in the gospel of the grace of God, that, uh, that uh, you came to this earth and you died and you buried and rose again for our sins. And Lord, as we think about um, the rest of the day, let's just, just, just rejoice in who we are, uh, that we have a hope and we have a promise and we have eternity through your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Uh, once again, uh, visit our uh, website at www.dispensationalbiblechurch.org. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, email us and text us. And uh, until next week, we see you then.